Well, thank you very much indeed, Michelle. Uh, I just acknowledge our traditional custodians, firstly, ladies and gentlemen, extend my respects to elders past and present, uh, to Steve Ryan and to uh, everybody gathered here today. It's lovely to see you come out and to support the Study Tours Brisbane. Uh, this is a great initiative from my point of view. It's an initiative which very much is at the heart of what we need to be about in Brisbane. Um, understanding what we have to offer as a city and then utilising that offering to share it with those who visit us. And it's timely that this breakfast be held this morning because we just yesterday had the release of the latest figures of international visitors to Brisbane. And those visitors have increased by about 9.5% again in the last year. So. That's on the back of 11% increases in international tourism in the previous two years. So it's a fantastic result for our city to see growth up 30% in that short period of time over the last three years. I want to acknowledge Councillor Stephen Wang down the back there too. Thank you, Stephen, for coming along. I just want to congratulate um, uh, this uh, organisation because I must admit when Michelle first came on the business mission a few years ago, as you mentioned, I um, wondered what on earth they were doing on this mission. Because uh, as a suburban hotel, I thought, ooh, okay, well that's a pretty brave call. But it's amazing, you know, it's, a, it's an old saying, he who dares wins. And uh, I think what they have proven is that they can very much do business in an international scale by being creative, innovative, and just making things happen. And uh, you know, Brisbane in the last uh, year and a half has gone from 85th place on the World Index of Innovative Cities to 60th place. And it's because of what might seem simple things like this, taking an offering and then growing it. Often people say to me, you know, I hear them out on the street, oh, what, what is there to do in Brisbane? And I think they must live in a cocoon, something, because there is an enormous number of things that we have to offer as a city, but we are not resting on our laurels, we're expanding those opportunities all the time. Uh, the cuddly koala, I always say, this is the only place in the world where you can hold and cuddle a koala. And it's true, and we should make more of that. And to that extent, um, we are going to be setting up a koala research centre at Lone Pine. Uh, we did these signs of the Memorandum of Understanding with the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary the other day. And that will be, for those of you that have been to, say, Chengdu in China, you will have seen the research centre there for the panda bear. Uh, we have a glass building where people can actually see the pandas inside, see the research happening inside. We have a lot of research being done on koalas here, but we don't have anything public where people can physically see what is happening. And so that will be the case in Brisbane when we build that centre. It's not actually a case where you have to go through the admission stalls, it will be centred outside. So anybody can go up uh, and, and view that centre. Now, Kutha is an area which is our second biggest tourist attractor outside of South Bank. And there's a number of initiatives we're going to undertake to expand the offering there. So, uh, just uh, the other day, I turned the sod on a new visitor information centre for the Botanic Gardens. We're going to be investing $2 million in J.C. Slaughter Falls and $2 million in Simpsons Falls. $5 million is going towards the upgrade of the walking trails here and linking some of those existing walking trails. We're also building a zip line. So council put in a million dollars. There are seven private sector proposals for that zip line and uh, they will operate. Uh, so all of these things together with what we're going to do is to create a bus link called the Kutha Shuttle, which will link the planetarium, the botanic gardens, J.C. Slaughter Falls, Simpsons Falls, the Lookout Summit, as well as the zip line and, um, and other attractions. And I'd love to have an indigenous experience built in to either J.C. Slaughter Falls or Simpsons Falls, but that's yet to be determined. So I just say these things because, you know, we've got to be continuing 
to add to the richness of the experience. And Michelle um, and Steve, I just congratulate you again for what you're doing here. You are taking what our offering is and then utilising that uh, as a package to give people coming to our city a real experience. Uh, we've said as a city that we are focused on the Asia Pacific region, uh, only because they are our, our closest neighbours, they are the growing economies, and that figure I announced earlier, the 9.5% increase, not surprisingly, the big increases are coming from our closest neighbours, China, Japan, and Korea. There's been a real renewed interest from Japan in Brisbane, and that's great to see. It was there once, it dropped off, and it's really coming back extremely strongly. So a 35% growth in tourism from Japan in the last year. Uh, Korea, again, very significant growth, up around 40%. So these are good things for Brisbane, and uh, with what's happening here at Robertson Gardens, the future is bright, I can just congratulate you on what's a, a terrific initiative. Thank you for having me here this morning. Thank you, Lord Mayor, for your kind words and also um, for your interest and support in this developing market for us. Um, you personally, for me, give me amazing encouragement to strive and I know as a business, uh, it makes us want to excel and even more exceed our guests' expectations. So if I may, I'd like to present you with a small gift on, as appreciation for your time. The first study tour cap off the printing press. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and every one of the delegates travelling on our tours will all have their study tour cap to wear while they're here in Queensland. Fantastic. And just a small gift. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, everyone.